All right, hey everyone, welcome to the Jazz Piano School podcast, episode number 71. As always, I'm your host, Brendan Lowe, and thank you so much for joining me. Today's episode is going to be the nine tips to improve your solo piano playing. So obviously, you may be able to hear, <coughs> well, there you go, I just gave it away. You can hear that my uh, voice is a little lower than usual. I, I, I have an extra octave to my, uh, my voice is pretty low as it is, but I have an extra octave now. Uh <laughs> I can sing some baritone lines, but I am sick, so I apologize. Thank you for, um, you know, your patience with my voice right now. I'm just going to sound like Barry White for this uh, entire podcast. But thank you again, and I'm very excited because this episode is obviously on nine tips to improve your solo piano playing. The reason I'm doing this one in the last week's episode is basically to promote our very first specialty course that we're going to be releasing this coming Monday, January 23rd at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 Eastern. And I'm very, very excited about this because uh, I've worked super hard. That's why I'm sick right now. I, I've been spending about 10, I've been doing 10 hour to 12 hour days working on the course, getting everything ready and just, you know, plowing it. <coughs> <laughs> plowing ahead, excuse me. And uh, it's finally caught up with me. But here I am. I'm still doing a podcast for you guys because I want to help you with this and it's it's very important. So uh, I'm very excited about the course. We have lots of new things and it's great because I, I've been wanting to do specialty courses for a while because the main course obviously includes three levels, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And it's just a, you know, it's a zoo. It's just, well, not a zoo. It's organized, right? It's very organized and structured, which I went for, but it's just a horde of videos. I mean, it, there's so much. In, I, I basically cover everything you could possibly want to know in jazz. And it's very detailed, but at the same time, I couldn't possibly, you know, spend the entire course going over how to accompany a singer or ear training or, you know, um, or solo piano, right? I, I obviously do have lots and lots of videos in there and exercises, but these specialty courses are going to be for people who are like, well, I don't, you know, I don't want to, I don't need the entire main course. You know, I just want, I need to, you know, improve my solo piano or I need to improve my blues. And I don't, I don't personally, I mean, I do agree with that. There's, but at the same time, I mean that it's okay. You know, my my whole philosophy behind jazz is that I think a lot of people have holes to fill, so I do recommend the main course. And I always love when I teach my students. I always want to improve everything, right? I, I don't like just focusing on one subject because I think when you really in, improve your foundation and the things that are creating the holes, then you're going to improve everything at once. You know, it's like saying. <clears throat> I just want to work on funk or I just want to work on blues. Well, if you have a really good foundation and you know all your harmony and theory and technique and repertoire and stuff like that very well, like this JPS system teaches, then you can play any style. Uh, so, you know, that just goes to show it. So that's why I don't really like focusing on one thing. But at the same time, I do believe that uh, a lot of the stuff is going to be very, very uh, helpful for people. Maybe they do just need that extra focus on solo piano, which this does. Now, solo piano is a beast in itself, right? Playing solo piano, you need to do everything. And it's funny because I heard uh, the when Bill Evans was on the Marion McPartland show, you know, she asked him what he thought, in his opinion, he needed to work on. And he said solo piano, his solo piano, right? And he had already recorded, this was towards the end of his career, he had already recorded his solo piano albums, which are obviously just, you know, phenomenal. And yet he said he needed to work more on solo piano. So even him at that point in his career, I mean, this was late, late, late in his career, close to his death, actually. And he said he needed to work on solo piano. So it's it's a it's a monster, you know, and I feel for everyone. And I feel for myself. I just went I went through 22 years of getting to a point where <clears throat> I could feel comfortable with my solo piano playing. But that was due to my journey in the random order of education that I learned everything in. And that's exactly why I built this course and I built JPS so that you don't have to go through 22 years of frustration and, you know, wanting to quit every year or so, which I which I went through. And, man, it was rough. So anyway, I put together this course because I wanted to help people uh, not have to go through that and really f- experience the joy, right, of being able to sit down at the piano. When you go up to a piano and you can, right, play whatever you want... Right? 
I just made that up completely. You know, it, obviously it was just simple progressions, but everything was improvised. And when you can sit down, I wasn't playing a melody. When you can sit down and do that, it's just so delightful. It's such an experience. It's in, it's a joy. And whether you're using it, whether, you know, I sit down at the piano or you sit down at the piano for um, personal reasons, right? As a hobby, you're playing professionally or you're using it for healing or therapy. You had a bad day. You had a happy day. You're, you're playing for others who may be having a bad day or having a great day. They want to hear you play. There's just so many, so much more to solo piano and playing piano that you can give to others and give back to yourself as well. Uh, that's just amazing, you know, and so it's just a really great thing. So I created the Soul Piano course. Now, if you're interested in the seven-step arranging process flow chart, that's still available. That's what I went over last week. You can go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash solo piano system, and that will allow you to download that. If you're not interested in getting the download, right, if you simply just want to check out what the solo piano course is, right, without any, uh, you know, giving your email address to opt in to, to get the download materials, you just simply want to see no hassle, right, we won't bother you or anything like that. On the day of the course, you can go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash solo piano system live okay jazzpianoschool.com forward slash solo piano system live <clears throat> sorry guys and you can see the video that's going to be live at 9 a.m this coming monday or 12 eastern okay and again everyone who's on the email list will get a reminder email but if you do or if you're not on the email list or you don't want to be on the email list just go to that link and you can check it out and you know if you're interested then go for it if you're not no problem but I just wanted to throw that out there. Jazzpianoschool.com forward slash soul piano system live. So here we go. This is going to be the nine steps to help improve your playing. Now, step number one is going to be, it's funny, it's going to be learn a tune. Okay, now don't roll your eyes because 99% of the, the reason students don't really do well at playing solo piano, they've learned all this information, they've learned their chords, they've learned their scales, but they go to sit on the tune and they just, they whiff on the bass you know, note or a chord because they don't know the tune, right? <laughs> You know, maybe they play an A flat there, or for Have You Met Miss Jones, or they're playing If I Were a Bell. You know, maybe they go to D flat or B flat, or they go to hit a chord and they're like, "Oh, I'm not. I don't remember what the chord is." So, <clears throat> the number one thing that you have to, have to, have to do is learn the tune thoroughly. And again, 99% of my of most people who think they know a tune actually don't know the tune thoroughly enough. You need to, and I did a podcast on this a while back. You need to practice right hand melody alone, right? And you should be able to do that, you know, in different tempos, different styles, different keys, you know, no matter what. Same with the bass notes, right? The bass note lines. Walk bass, you can do that, but I would just recommend just playing the bass notes alone. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that's, I mean, that should be automatic for you. You shouldn't have to, if you feel the slightest hesitation, then you got to practice more. And that's just, that's just the bottom line. I mean, it's where you want to set your standards, where you want to settle, because you know when you feel that hesitation, when you're guessing, you're looking for the chord. Now, you know the chord, right? If I say play a C7 chord, you can go bam. But it's different when you don't know what the chord is in the tune, right? So you don't remember. So learning the tune is so, so important because, again, that's what that's the roadblock that actually prohibits people from actually expressing themselves uh, in solo piano. Number two is going to be voicings and shells. <clears throat> now, as I get further in the steps, you're going to hear uh, how important the shells are. And I'm going to say it right now, too. Obviously, knowing your voicing so that you can hit certain voicings is really, really important. But your shells, your shells are the third and seventh of a chord. And they dictate the quality of the chord. So without your shells or knowing how to play your shells, you really are missing the, the complete harmony of the chord to a tune. So if I were to play, if I were a bell, right, our sh my shells, you should be able to voice lead through your shells, just your left hand. Two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four. Right, and so on. So 
you need to know your shells inside and out with your left hand. Obviously, your voicings too, right? You should have some sort of voicings that you go to, like your rootless voicings or your root position or your inversions. Whatever it is, you need to be able to play that voicing of G7, right? Or, or if you're playing a rootless or whatever you want, right? You need to be able to do that. It's just so important, so important. And I'm going to talk about why the shells are so important later on as well. Uh, left Number three is going to be left-hand motion and bass motion. Another super important thing, again, all this is going to tie together in the next step, actually. Your left hand is so important in solo piano, and a lot of people focus on their right hand so much because of melodies. You know, because you're improvising, you're playing melodies with your right hand, your left hand in solo piano is providing the support. So many people are focused on the right hand and group playing or just things like that that they neglect their left hand. <clears throat> when it comes to playing solo piano, they are have a hard time because they can't do what your left hand needs to do, which is jump around, make these jump to your shells or make a jump to a chord or walking bass, right? Maybe two feel in bass. Right? Or maybe bass note counter line, stuff like that. You know, stuff like that. So your left hand is just so much more active in solo piano. It has to be stronger. So you can practice classical tunes, just your left hand alone, classically. You can practice uh, jazz tunes, just practice that alone, just your left hand, right? Practicing the chords or practicing the bass motion. Uh, whatever you need to do to strengthen your hand and get it more comfortable. Obviously, we have a lot of practice exercise for that in the solo piano course. But whatever you need to do to get your left hand more comfortable and stronger, you need to do that because it's going to be, it's, it's your support. It's all your support in solo piano. Now, number four is going to be the bare bones <clears throat> of solo piano. And I'm going to give you the honest truth right here. Solo piano is all left-hand bass notes to shells, chords, and the melody in your right hand. Okay? So the only real true things you need in solo piano are your left-hand bass notes. You need your shells because they dictate the quality of the chord. And you need your right-hand melody. And that's it. That's it. That's really the bare bones, right? So that's why it's so important to have your bass notes. Have your shells and your melody. And just doing what I just did. I mean, you can play solo piano that way. It's not going to sound richer if I'm harmonizing, right? Maybe doing this. You know, stuff like that. Obviously, that's more advanced, but you can just play uh, solo piano just with your bass note and melody and shells. That's all you need. So a quick way to get better, right, or just improve your foundation, I should say a quick way, but, you know, by improving your play or your skill level of playing right-hand melody, left-hand bass notes, and shells, you're, you're automatically going to improve your foundation and your skill level for more advanced things to come right to build off of that foundation okay <clears throat> so when you practice right practice with your melody your bass note and your shells and see if you can just put all that together and that will start to really really help improve your solo piano play that's number four now number five is going to be harmonizations right so uh, I was teaching a student the other day and um his sound was just basically melody and what I was just doing, right? So your sound needs to sound full in solo piano. If you listen to a lot of great solo pianos like Art Tatum, Oscar Peterson, Errol Garner, Bill Evans, it sounds like they have a whole band, you know, playing solo piano. Now, are we going to be able to sound like them? Probably not, but that's okay. We can get close. So uh, we want everything to sound full. And the way they do that, again, <coughs> excuse me, is with their left hand being active, right? Bill has a lot of left hand movement going on, right? You know, he's arpeggiating a lot of things, you know, for chords or moving, you know, moving lines. Uh, but it, it depends on what you're playing. But 
harmonization in your right hand underneath the melody is the easiest way. Now, I kind of just gave you an example in If I Were a Bell. Instead of just playing the melody, going to your shells, right? You can harmonize underneath the melody. That's, go excuse me, that's going to give you a, a thicker sound. Right, even when I hit the C here, instead of just going like this, I can hit the, the shells underneath my melody and get a nice, beautiful sound. What I'm doing here is using the arranging process I actually went over in the last podcast episode, and, and I go more into detail in the solo piano course. I'm actually using the arranging process here to arrange with my melody, and I play the melody here. Here's a sus chord resolution with a flat nine. This is all the arranging process. Now here's passing chords. I'll get to that in a second in the next couple steps. Okay, so all that kind of rich harmonization comes from your right hand harmonization. Uh, otherwise, it just sounds like this. And that's it. So it's really, that's the bare bones, right hand melody, left hand bass notes, and shells that I just talked about. But by adding that right hand harmonization, you're going to thicken it up. <clears throat> Thanks for bearing with me, guys. Number six is going to be tempo holding techniques and methods. Now, jazz music is, uh, it's all about rhythm, swing, rhythm, and it, a lot of it was played, you know, back in the day to dance to, right? To dance. So if you're not holding the tempo, you need to be able to feel the tempo in your tune, right? And that comes, if, you, if the melody stops, like it does in If I Were Bell, the melody's moving here. There's no tempo if you're just sitting here, right? One, two, three, four, two, two, three. So in If I Were Bell, the melody notes, it's a tied whole note. So you actually have like five or six beats of just nothing, right? When I say tempo holding, you have to be able to keep that tempo when that's when nothing's going on. That's your job to keep the tempo going so people can dance. Otherwise, it's just open, dead, bland space, right? So there's methods you can do that. Obviously, people like to walk bass a lot. Um, that doesn't include the shells, but it's an okay way to do it, and I, I definitely have that in the course as well, and I recommend it. But I, I do also love including the shells. I love... Uh, there's different methods to hold the tempo, obviously comps, improv lines, right? You can add, you just want to do something to hold that tempo. I mean, you can do hold the tempo as well and do something else with your right hand. So no matter what you're doing. So let's say <clears throat> if I were a bell, right? I have that passing kind of uh, a comp line, right? So I'm holding the tempo with this comp. One, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, four, and one, and two. That holds the tempo there. Right, but without that, it just sits here. Nothing's going on. Okay, and again, walking bass. Right, you could walk bass. You could you could ju you could play your broken um, stride. Call that kind of broken stride with your left hand um, stabs and bass note motion. That's a method that I teach in the course. <coughs> but something has to hold the tempo, okay, to keep the dancers dancing, right? Otherwise, they'd just stop and turn their head and look at the band, right? That'd be awkward. So we don't want that. All right, number seven, getting we're almost done. Rhythms, okay? I'm going to give you one little tip here that's just going to change your playing uh, like none other. So, so many beginners play uh, their left hand on downbeat. So, it sounds like this. I, I, it's really actually hard for me to do it, but it sounds something like that. So, let me try again without the pedal. So it just feels so awkward for me. But playing your left hand on downbeats is really like the stride ragtime. It gives you a, a very heavy feel to your playing. If you're playing stride, no problem. You know, stuff like that. Um, that's okay. 
right? You can <clears throat> you can definitely do that. But if you want the more modern uh, kind of, uh, I shouldn't say modern, but just getting out of the late 20s and 30s uh, as we get into the 40s, 50s, and 60s, right? More of a, a modern jazz sound that you hear on albums, you need to place your left hand on upbeats for solo piano. And your melody, I'm not talking about improv with your right hand. When your right hand's improvising, you know, anything's game. But I'm just talking about playing the melody. So listen to the difference when I play If I Were a Bell with my left hand on all upbeats, okay? Right? So I'm just playing all upbeats here. And just by doing that, it gives it the pop feel. It gives it the jazz feel, right? The the uplifting, joyous feel of those upbeats, feeling those upbeats. Like one, and two, and three, ah, two, ga, two, ga, two, da, two, da, right? Like a drummer. Otherwise, when your left hand's accompanying your right hand and you're putting everything on don't, dun, 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 don't, 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 don't. That's like a march. It starts to feel like a march. So you need those upbeats in your left hand. And it's such a fine detail that not many people actually realize, but it's so, so important, all right? Number eight is going to be space fill techniques. And this is kind of similar to uh, the tempo hold <coughs> the tempo holding. Excuse me. When there's space, you have to do something in that space. And it'll, not all the time, right? 99% of the time, you should put something in the space because it's nice. If you're playing a nice ballad, definitely leave space. But like we, like you saw in If I Were a Bell, um, you're probably getting sick of this line. Maybe I should choose something else. Uh, there will never be another you, right? So I used a comp kind of with some bass note motion. And there's lots of different methods. I go over like 10 or 12 different methods in the solo piano course that you can use. But your goal is to fill that space. You need to accompany yourself. <coughs> Excuse me, like a big band, right? So if the melody is being stated and then the big band has some horn lines or some fill lines, right? Or Frank, Frank is singing the melody and then the bassy band is playing some fills in between his melody sometimes, right? So when you get to those certain spots, right, make a comp, maybe make, uh, you know, you could put, add an improv line in there. Uh, you can add some voice motion, some passing chords, block chords, whatever you want, some drop twos, right? But do something in that space of your solo piano, okay? Because it's really going to help out. That's number eight. <clears throat> now, number nine, the last one, is that you have to realize that certain styles and tempos are going to lend themselves to certain things. Now, the majority, like I said, of medium and up, uh, medium, uh, you know, and, and up above that tempo tunes is going to be a lot of your left hand bass note with your shells because you don't have time to do much of anything else, right? So if I'm playing a tune, um, um, I'm, I'm going beautiful love, right? So I need to hold the tempo, I need to add space, I need to do a lot, a lot of things at that faster tempo. I can't, I can't go, I mean I could, but it's hard to arrange lush, rich voicings at that tempo. That's why I kind of use this method that I teach in the course, which is I'll, I'll play a note and then comp underneath. But even there, I have melody to play after that. Right? So your comps and fills kind of play come after the melody. But again, if you're approaching a ballad, right? <clears throat> you know, your approach is going to be completely different. So you, you want to just be aware, be conscious of the style, the tempo that you're playing at, right, of the jazz standard, and your the approach you're taking, right? More faster tempos and different styles are going to lend themselves to different things. Now, slower swing, excuse me, slower swing styles 
will lend themselves to kind of more of a stride feel, maybe more of just a gritty openness. Again, more of the slower ballad tunes, even some more, <clears throat> you can play faster tunes that are more open, right? You could play all the things you are as a medium, but leave it more open, right? So if I count all the things you are, are here, one, two, one, two, three, four. Right by use by the use of my pedal in the approach and me holding the chords out, it creates this open airy atmosphere. Excuse me. Whereas if I, <coughs> as if I play it, um, if I play it more with a different approach, just using bass notes in shells with open space, like short rhythms, it will sound completely different. One, two, a one, two, three, four. Right, sorry. So um, that approach is is completely different, and you want to be aware of that when approaching the tunes. Uh, you know how how are you going to approach this? How what am I going to do? What's am I going to play? Uh, you know, longer rhythms, shorter rhythms. Am I going to let it'll be the atmosphere more airy, more open, or kind of more direct, more gritty? You know, maybe in a blues, your your slow swing blues, you can leave more space. Right, a one, two, three. solo piano here but it's just so laid back and easy right so your approach really dictates what you're going to do with the tune and you want to be creative with it because you can approach, you know, the tunes in so many, so many different ways. So that's going to be the last one. Practice things in with different approaches and different tempos, right? The way you play a fast tune is going to be completely different than the way you play a slow tune. Try not to play all the tunes the same exact way and try and play as many different types of tunes as possible. Modern, uh, old tunes, um, you know, more just recent tunes, um, Broadway tunes, right? There's so many different types of tunes, and that will really, really help. So, again, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was a little shorter than uh, most of the podcast. But, again, uh, I'm sick. And I'm, I'm sure you're just like, oh, God, this guy sounds like death. <laughs> Which, you know, it's funny because I don't feel that bad. I just sound kind of bad. You know, I'm still going strong here until <laughs> until the release of the course. And then I'll probably just crash for days. But, anyway, thanks so much for joining me. Again, if you guys are interested in checking out the video, uh, on the release day, go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash solo piano system live. And again, to download the seven step arranging process I went over in the last episode, go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash solo piano system. All right. So hopefully this helped, guys. Uh, until next time, I got some requests. I'm going to be uh, doing some podcast requests from people. I'm very happy to do that. I love doing requests for people. Uh, until I do that, until next time, happy practicing.